good kitten internet so this is going to be another um video of me just trying to figure out mechanics of things and this time i'm going to be figuring out the mechanics of punch actually slide in view of sorcery so all i've done is this is from my previous save i've used up all but one mystic apple that way i can easily duplicate them because i really don't feel like hex editing this especially since cecilia's sorcery is probably approaching high enough so what i'm going to do is um uh brain not working let's go ahead and duplicate sorcery so the easiest way to do that is the down here nope that's the outer sea not the inner sea inner sea is up here. inner sea entrance is up here i was going to hit the map because i think it actually shows where the sweet candy is ah i don't care Let's just speed things up a little bit. Oh, it helps if I actually have that highlighted. It's a beautiful morning, by the way. Um, so I'm probably not going to be playing too long, hopefully. I'm hoping that this one's going to actually be shorter than um, the previous videos. Where am I again? Okay, so I'm going to go back to Adelaide. What is it, Isun? There's something on the table that's currently a secret to you that he's trying to go after. Come on. Okay. So, um... Go ahead and stop fast-forwarding. I'm gonna do the duplication thing. Use healberry on self, use healberry on self, swap healberries with mystic apples, and then punch a pill bug in the face. Mm. They're death, dude. So, well, since Isun's decided to leave, let me introduce you to our new kitty cam companion. This is Maya. Round down a bit. Ah! I had this set up and then Isun decided to say hi. So I decided that, you know. There we go. This is Maya. Um, this is an Iremote cat. Um, from. Uh, this stuffed animal was purchased from Iremote Island. And. Uh, yeah! I don't know what else to say. Oh, um. So my, I have a pair of friends who had gone to Japan, specifically went to Iremote Island, and um, I was looking after their kitty. Uh, that's the Pudge. I've mentioned Pudge in a couple of videos, and they got me this. So yep, we have a substitute kitty cam when a kitty decides to not show up. Anyway. Um, we're going to go back to our favorite place to test anything ever, the Berry Cave. Because why not? And we're going to test out some sorcery. But first, let's get people Darn it. back on reserve. I don't feel like caring about that whatsoever because this is all about bats. Okay. So, first thing I'm going to do is readjust because I sit weird on chairs. Um, anybody else fold up whenever they sit in a chair? It's weird. I know. Um, first thing I'm going to do is get some baseline. Um, actually, no. First thing I'm going to do is create a save state because this time I'm doing this purely in an emulator. So, save state created. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is figure out how much Jack heals. Because the first thing I want to know is basically Jack um, does Jack's heal blade actually have any effect on sorcery? So here's what my parameters of testing. I'm going to be testing if sorcery has any effect on Jack. The way I'm going to do this is by using heal blade, soul breaker, 
uh, Steel Blade, Soul Breaker, Trickster, and Meteor Dive. So these four over here. I've actually been waiting until this point of the game. Um, although to be honest, I well for the baseline, I don't. Hmm, I actually might want to duplicate the uh, secret signs. Do I have any secret signs at the moment? Or am I out? I think I might be out of secret signs. Yeah, I'm currently out. Drat. If I would have thought about it, I would have duplicated some secret signs ahead of time. That way I can drop all the cost to one and not have to worry too much. Anyway, um, so these are the four abilities that I'm going to be testing on Jack. So this video is probably just going to be sorcery on Jack, but we'll find out. Um, so this is going to be baseline. All I'm going to be doing is heal blading. And then I'm going to note down... Actually, I forgot I have this in one note, don't I? Uh, that's, yeah, that's a good enough one note. Um, I'm going to note down. Uh, basically, how much this heals. And then I'm going to add in sorcery apples, and that should be really obvious as if there's a difference, because I'm going to use up 250 sorcery apples. So, um... I'm not trying to figure out exactly what the formula is at the moment. I'm just trying to figure out if sorcery even affects Jack. So, Jack, no blade. Okay, so heal blade he is healing. Oh, darn it, I need to actually be damaged to notice how much heal blade heals. Oop. I am in the wrong place to test out Healblade. So I will test out Healblade later. Um, I'll probably reload to handle Healblade, actually. So I'm going to test out the other ones first. So Trickster is going to be the first one I'm going to test out. So there's two ways I want to test out Trickster. It helps if this is active. There we go. Um, first way I'm going to test out Trickster is via... Just, how do I want to do this? Chance of stealing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use Trickster. Oh, balloons have nothing. That doesn't help me. I assume. Ah, you see why this is so hard to test out? Alright, you know what? I'm going to test out Jack's uh, meter dive first. Because that's going to be very easy and obvious. So. Meteor dive onto a balloon. Doing 1,083 damage right now. No, it's in. No. I'm trying to eat the tail of my Irma. Okay. Um, okay. So that did 1,086 damage. Now let's use a... enough of these where it should be very obvious if sorcery has any effect whatsoever. I have a hunch the answer is no, by the way, but I actually don't know for sure. Alright. We're using up all 254 of them. Uh, 68 remaining. Let's just use up all 255. I have a save state. There we go. Okay. So, if sorcery has any effect, it should be a dramatic damage increase. Meteor dive. That was significantly lower. So, I'm going to go with no. But let's go ahead and do another test or two. Probably should have grabbed the range. Oh, gee, preemptive strike. That's what I need. Sorcery has no effect on damage. Good to know. Let's go ahead and... Let's see. Alright. Next thing I'm going to test. Uh, you can't test Heal Blade in here. Divide Strike will be the next one. So, uh, helps if I actually tell it not to auto-battle. So, for this, 
I'm going to be having Jack set to manual, but the other two set for auto battle. Okay. So what I'm going to do is Soul Breaker. So that was a miss. What I don't know is what the hit chance is right now. But what I'm going to do is test this out a whole bunch, then come back to you and find out, well, how well this worked. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to test this out. I'll just go with a lot. I'll be back. All right, so I've... Here, I can make the music actually normal. Um, so I've done a bit of testing, and we have a bit of a problem. The problem being that balloons have no souls. It's literally failed every time that I've run this, and I've actually ran Jack out of MP at this point. Um, this is not something that I knew. I mean, I knew that certain enemies could be immune to it, and it would make sense that bosses are immune to instant death. But balloons? Um, so, yeah. Basically, what it boils down to... I think balloons are immune to instant death. Ah, not something I was expecting at all. I'm going to have to do a different test, and this does not help. So I can't do Trickster because balloons have no items. Uh, we did the Meteor Dive test. Sorcery has no effect. Um, we can't do the Heal Blade test because nobody's getting damaged by balloons. And Soul Breaker, balloons are immune to... Ah. Okay. So. Next test. Let's go ahead and reload from the save state. And we're going to start testing Cecilia. So. Oh, actually, before we do this, I'm going to head back over to Adelaide and un... And Disintegrate all of my crests, save one. Um, so there's two tests that I want to do. First test is actually much easier than the second. Um, so I'm going to just fast forward. Okay, so let's go back to crest craft. Oops. And let's dissolve everything. This is going to be boring. I'll be back. Hello again. I decided there was one test that I should do before I dissolve everybody's grass graphs. Um, actually, what I should do is duplicate my Agile Apples to make sure that Cecilia's first. Actually, I can unequip Flash Rune. Put it on Cecilia. And now Cecilia's res 81, 81. Okay, let's go ahead and duplicate some agile apples for this test, and then we shall begin. Because it's gonna be much easier if Cecilia is so much faster than everybody else. Come on, there we go. Oh, I should probably cast curse on myself. That would make sense. Um, I'll try to remember to bind that when I do this later. Um, first thing we're going to do is duplicate Potion Berry on self, Potion Berry on self, Swap of the two, and Punch in the face. Password button only works if it's actually active. I know the balloon ran away. Sweet. Okay. Let's go ahead and Agile Carex Cecilia up as far as I can get her. That way she is definitely first and this will go faster as a result. Honestly, that's good enough. Okay. So, this first test doesn't require me to increase sorcery at all. Um, what I want to do, as you can see in the top right hand corner, I'm checking to see if there's any difference in damage between Blast, Spark, and Flame. Or whatever the Flame one's called. Uh, let's save state. Yeah, Flame. So, Blast.
Blast and Spark are both areas of effect, and Flame is single target, but they're all level 1 spells. What I don't know is if there's any damage difference between them. I know there isn't any damage difference between the elements. What I don't know is if there's any damage difference between Spark and Flame, for an example, or Blast and Flame, or Blast and Spark. Balloons are, I believe, weak against nothing. So flame should just do normal damage. Yeah, 341. So what I'm going to do is write down how much damage Spark, Blast, and Flame will end up doing. I probably don't need much of a test, because my theory is that they all do roughly the same amount of damage. Alright, and I will be back. And we're back. This is adorable. So the results were actually fairly surprising for the difference between Flame, Spark, and Blast. I also ended up doing Valkyrie, which is that spell that hits everybody, but um, with at least one attack of each element, it looked like. I'm pretty sure that's actually what it is. Um, and I did Valkyrie against single targets specifically, although um, interesting about that that I'll mention in a moment. So here are the results. Uh, darn it. Need to make this look better. Darn it, yeah. Dang it. Any. Not what I wanted to do. So, um. Here are the results. So, this is with Cecilia at 124 sorcery. So, I haven't changed sorcery at all or anything like that. Um, this is how much damage those are doing. Now, Flame is the same as Vortex, which is the same as, uh, uh, which is the same as Break, which is the same as Freeze. Um, all four of those do the same amount of damage. I did a quick spot check, but yeah, they're doing the same. Um, so those are the maximums, minimums, and average. Spark and Blast are probably doing the same amount of damage as each other. You'll notice that it's um, Blast did two less maximum damage one more minimum damage and had a slightly higher average that's probably just due to sample size since i'm only doing 20 of 20 attacks of each of these um and then valkyrie look how much damage valkyrie does so i think i know why valkyrie is doing so much damage and that actually makes balloons ideal test subjects for this so as far as i can tell balloons don't have magic resistance at all so um Anecdotally, and I have not done the full testing on this yet, but whenever I encountered an encounter with more than one balloon, um, Valkyrie would do damage divided up, but it seemed like the amount of damage it was doing combined with everybody was about what I would expect a single attack to do, which would make sense if magic resistance was only being applied once, or if they didn't have any magic resistance. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, and that's going to have to be for another time. I'm mostly analyzing sorcery. So at 124 sorcery, which is what Cecilia currently has, um, see, Cecilia has 124 sorcery. This is how much damage Flame, Spark, Blast, and Valkyrie do. Which is interesting, because I was not expecting Spark and Blast to do less damage than the basic elements. That is actually a bit concerning. Because uh, all this time, whenever I, back when I was playing as a kid, whenever I would make an attack, and I didn't know what element to use, I would just use Blast by default, because, hey, look, it's not going to resist it. I'll do damage faster that way, even against a single target, which is not the case, and I should pay attention to that. As a result, I should figure out what element at least does neutral damage and use that one. Um, yeah not expecting that result so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to feed cecilia a bunch of um apples uh sorcery apples and increase her sorcery to i'm thinking double what it currently is that should give a very obvious result and we'll see what happens um one thing to note is that I know some of the uh, white magic spells, like for instance, um, uh, 
shield, for an example, that doesn't do any difference, regardless of sorcery, if I remember. Oh, well, maybe it does. Hold on a moment. Let me get into a battle really fast. My shield would be a lot easier to use at this point. I can put that about up here. Anyway, um, let's cast shield really fast to see if it says anything. Yeah, it's a percentage. So it doesn't make any sense whatsoever for me to do that. And it's going to be really hard for me to test attacks. So I'm not going to, or attacks on me, slash defensive abilities on me. So I'm not going to bother at the moment. So good to know. Um, there are some white magic that I would like to test, like for instance, heal, but I need to be damaged to be able to do this. And that is not going to be easy to set up. I'm still thinking about the best way of doing that. And I still want to figure out how to, uh, like, the status effects. So. Yeah. I'm going to test, um, status effects now. I'll be back. Hello again. Um, so there's a problem with me st testing status effects. And I'm sure somebody figured it out really fast. So I'm testing sleep. Let me slow this down even more. Slow the sound to normal speed. And you'll see the problem really fast. Balloons are immune to status effects. They're immune to instant death, so it probably shouldn't surprise me too much that they're immune to status also. But this is going to make this really difficult to test. Because balloons are a known quantity, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. I can always encounter a balloon here. Um, I think I might need to go to... No... I can't go back to the Sacred Library in Kieran Abbey right now. It's the only place I can't go back to. Ah. I'm going to have to figure something out because I can't test those right now. The only consistent enemy that I have in the game are these balloons. And if they're immune to status effects, I can't test any of the status effects stuff. So I think I'm going to save the status effect things for another video. Let's go ahead and let me reload from save state. Um, we're going to test... Um, sorcery. Now, the way I want to test this, uh, I was mentioning before, is that I want to go back to Adelaide. And the reason why I want to go back to Adelaide to remove my spells is that I'm going to use auto battle. It's going to be easier for me to test that way. So, as I was doing before I decided to go interrupt myself. Let's go remove all of my spells. And yes, I am going to be testing Light Blow and Dark Blow as well, but not right now. Be back. All right, we're back. Um, so he only has two spells right now, Flame and Curse. Uh, the reason why I put up Curse is because Curse can't be used in combat anyway. So it's not going to affect our um, trial. But it will increase the speed of encounters, and that'll make things a little bit easier for me to test. Um, so my intent, let's go ahead and make a save state right now. My intent is we're going to try this in increments of 50. So right now I have 124 sorcery. Um, actually, no. So I have 124 sorcery right now. I want to try it at 248 sorcery. And I'm going to do increments somewhere in the middle as well. So, um, I saved. Let's get sorcery up to 228. That doesn't make it any faster. I know I could have done it in the other order. Um, where I... Um, whatchamacallit, um, increase it by an increment, test, increase it by an increment, test, and so on, but, yeah, well, screw it. And we are going to set Cecilia to all out. That should be fighting with maximum power. Oh, um, let's actually cast our curse spell. I'm going to go this slow to make sure that this works before I continue. We're ambushed. Ah, uh, this actually happened once during my testing. 
got ambushed by a balloon. Um, luckily, apparently on an ambush, I can't counterattack. So, yep, Cecilia casts flame. And then I just right down damage. Damage is 645. All right. Let us continue. Five, and now I will test. Be back. So I haven't gone very far in the recording, but I wanted to show something. Um, let's make sure I get another encounter. Because this was interesting and not something I was expecting to see from the AI. Yep, so if there's more than one in Balloon, Cecilia just attacks rather than casting a spell. Because she doesn't have a spell that can actually do damage to both of them. I was not expecting that, so that's actually going to mess up my testing a little bit. Maybe I shouldn't bother with the auto battle and should just do this manually. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Oh well, well, now I know. Be back. Just wanted to point out two things. One, he seemed to think of himself. And two, the butt wiggle at the fast forward speed is ridiculous. Okay, that was all. Um... So far, I've tested uh, 124 sorcery and 248 sorcery, and it kind of looks a lot like the types of things that I was seeing when it came to attack damage, only this is more linear. More on that when I finish. All right, and we're back. I've finished up my testing, and results have shocked me, actually. Um, so I've cast Flame against 20 targets, each at 124 sorcery, 248 sorcery, and 372 for sorcery, or basically 1x, 2x, 3x. And the damage is 1x, 2x, 3x. Um, the 248 sorcery is a little off uh, compared to 1x, 2x, 3x, but the 372 sorcery is pretty much dead on. Um, 1199 divided by 3 is roughly 399 and 2 thirds. Um, which is not very far off of the max that we saw at 124 sorcery. And also the minimum sorcery, um, 1013 divided by 3, is a little over 337, which is a little over the minimum sorcery that we actually spotted at 124 sorcery. Or minimum damage that we saw at 124 sorcery, which means that damage is linear. I think we might have our first case of quadratic warriors linear wizards. Um... So, I'm going to do a little bit more testing. This is a very weird result to me, and I'm actually wondering if this is because balloons have zero defense. So, I'm going to be doing a little bit more testing. I'm going to do testing with, um, whatchamacallit, um, uh, why am I having, why am I brain farting right now? I'm going to do a little bit of testing with dropping Cecilia's sorcery down a couple of steps, and, which requires saves save editing, which is the reason why I don't want to do that at the exact moment. Um, and also, I'm going to try to make Valkyrie in the same way, because Valkyrie has a bunch of different attacks all at once, and I want to know if that one goes linear or quadratic. Okay, be back again. Hello once more, Internet. So, I have good news and more good news this time. So if you'll notice that uh, Cecilia is back in her original outfit, I, rather than modifying a game save, I decided to load one of, an old game save and basically just run here as fast as I could, um, which gave me the ability to look at 25 sorcery and 30 sorcery. Uh, Cecilia at the moment has 30 sorcery for reference, or no, at the moment she has 25 sorcery. Um, with the water rune and leveled up, it's 30. So, um... What does this mean? Well, I have now fully figured out two things. One, the damage formula for sorcery. Um, so I just did 76 damage, which is nice. Um, I don't have force effects yet, but I have the rest of the formula, which is right here. Move this in the center of the screen and in begin. So, uh, minimum damage appears to be sorcery stat times 2.75 minus magic resistance times some number and then maximum damage is sorcery times 3.25 minus magic resistance times some number the good news bad news piece is the fact that balloons have zero magic resistance 
I have conclusively proven this. Um, no matter what your sorcery rating is, you can do damage to a balloon with flame. So, it's really hard for me to figure out what that X is. Um, on the way over here, I had bought some Tenobelms, which Tenobelms, in fact, do have magic resistance, and Cecilia was doing zero damage to them. So, that's what I think I'm going to have to do to figure out what the magic resistance bit is. The problem is that I'm going to have to fight a bunch of different enemies to figure out what that magic is. Er, Magic, whether it's magic resistance, magic resistance times some number, that I don't know. I mean, for all I know, the formula could actually end up being something like this. It could actually be that. I have no idea. That's the reason why I'm displaying it like what I did below. Um, it would kind of make sense that it would be this, because this would be a much easier thing for the game to calculate. And also, it actually makes sense unlike anything else that I've been doing. So, yeah, um, that seems to be a result of sorcery. I tried the sleep spell. Um, Cecilia actually has the sleep spell along with flame and heal. I tried the sleep spell against a variety of enemies. Turns out that pretty much every starting enemy is immune to all status effects. What? I have no idea why. That doesn't make any sense at all to me. But, um, I'm gonna have to do status effects some other time, and I'm going to have to figure out a more reliable way of reproducing this. Uh, the last thing I want to do is teach myself how to do healing. Um, something else that I discovered is that the random number generator is not very random in this. Um, I'm a lot more precise in using this gamepad, especially using the D-pad move back and forth that I am PS2 controller or uh, the keyboard would probably also be rather precise and I was noticing in my testing I was getting repeats of the same results and the reason why is that I would have to load state in order to be able to continue because this lead would level up uh, as a result it's gonna make testing actually significantly harder because I'm going to have to somehow get that re-random seed going again and what that may end up looking like is well find out. Let's do some heal testing, shall we? Um, well, first, let's load up our real save again. Be back. Well, might as well actually load it while we're talking. And now I'll be back. Alright, so healing test. Um, I've gotten a little beat up. All I did was basically just take the boat back to Cecilia. Cecilia, Adelheid, and just move around around here in order to be able to take damage. And Jack's been hit pretty hard. He's taken nearly a thousand points of damage. Which is a, about the best I could do is either that, or if I need more hit points, do Rudy. Since Rudy has gobs of hit points. But what I'm going to do is remove this orb of power. I don't care what I equip. And then equip it on Jack. And the reason why I'm doing that because now he has even more lack of hit points. So this should be a reasonably good test. I'm going to resave my state again because I don't want to redo that. So now all we need to do is get into a battle, which should not be hard. I don't need to go well this. It doesn't matter what the battle is in this case. Oh, I forgot to remove auto battle. All right, let us begin. Um, this is our baseline test. I'll look how, at how much sorcery Jack has in a bit. So, heal yourself. 756. Alright. Note that down and continue. Be back. Alright, and I'm back. Healing took an embarrassingly long amount of time to figure out, given how stupid simple it is, and I can't believe I've never realized this in the past. So, I've done a lot of healing, I've worked on increasing, decreasing sorcery, I've worked on um, everybody taking damage, I've worked on all sorts of things, and it's really, really dumb. Um, so, Cecilia's healing, so just, like, casting that heal spell is really simple. It heals five times the sorcery stat. 
no randomization. There's no variance. It doesn't matter what you're fighting. It doesn't matter who you're healing. It is literally five times a sorcery stat. Which means that Cecilia is a reasonably good healer. But it actually means that Jack's a better healer in a lot of other ways, because Jack's healing doesn't work that way at all. Jack's healing heals 50% of the target's maximum hit points. That's it. It always heals 50% of the target's maximum hit points. Doesn't matter what any of your stats are, doesn't matter on anything else whatsoever, it heals exactly precisely 50% of the target's maximum hit points. There's nothing else to it. All this time, I was assuming that, okay, maybe Jack's healing's based off of his sorcery stat. Maybe it's, um, based off of attack power. Maybe it's based off of strength. I didn't know. Turns out, it's a lot simpler than I was expecting. So, that's it for this. Let's analyze wild arms. Um, we've, oh, um, the only other thing that I haven't done, which is really hard to test, so I'm not going to bother, is the effect of sorcery on summons. Um, I can't do that. It's way too difficult for me to figure out. Uh, maybe some other time. Maybe once I can figure out where the summons are actually stored in the game files and maybe be able to reverse engineer it that way. I'm going to stop recording, quickly edit this video together, and go on a walk because it's beautiful outside today. I mean, today's high is only 24 Celsius. Um, Fahrenheit, that's what, 76, roughly? Anyway, I'm gonna go now. Bye, internet. I, I wish I would have realized Heal Void was actually that easy.